Welcome to What's the 4 in 1, your smart source for urban lifestyle and entertainment news. I'm Kizzy Cox. I'm Onika McLean. And I'm Sydney Wayman. Okay, so let's get a quick take on what's popping. Mm -hmm. Okay, so le legendary pop, pop music, musician Prince is saving mm -hmm. lives from the grave. His mm. lifelong friend, Shaka Khan, checked mm -hmm. herself into a rehab center saying wow. that she's addicted to those same painkillers that Prince was addicted to, wow. the opioids. Right, so she said that her and her sister saw what happened to Prince and, the, and she was like, you know what, I can't do this anymore. I know that my fans will be disappointed, but if I can live longer, mm -hmm. it will just be a better situation. So. Good for her. And the saga continues with Taylor Swift and the Kardashian <laughs> Wesses. <Darth, Darth> <laughs> <laughs> so the, their household is heating up. So it turns out that Kim Kardashian West taped a conversation between Kanye and Taylor about that song. Because she Infamous. tapes everything. <laughs> <is like impressed. laughs> right. Okay. So the Twitter first. The Twitterverse went. Berserk, right? Okay. So now they call they they call and Taylor Swift out, and Taylor Swift camps is thinking about suing the Kanye the Kardashian Wesses because they feel that you know yeah. it's def defamed her character. So now we're on to what's popping. Mm -hmm. Rapper ASAP Rocky. Now he's used to making you know all types of headlines for top of music charts, but now. He's making headlines for all the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. Last year, after Michael Brown was killed in Ferguson, oh, yeah. Time Out Magazine this. interviewed ASAP Rocky, asking him whether he felt forced to kind of address the issue. And ASAP Rocky responded with this obscenity-laced tirade about how he's not a political activist and don't try to make him into one. I have to just give y'all a little snippet. Can't say much, too much, too many curses. But he's <laughs> like, look, I'm ASAP Rocky. I'm not, a I'm not Al Sharpton. I want to talk about my lean, my the girls that come out of my in and out of my life, the jiggy fashion I wear, my new inspirations in drugs. I don't want to talk about Ferguson because I don't live there. I live in Soho and Beverly Hills. And he can't relate. <laughs> he, 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 cannot, said, he said he cannot. He, he cannot, cannot relate. relate. I was like, what? what yeah. The? So <laughs> in light of the recent deaths of Alton Sterling and Philando Castillo, some people are appalled. Like. What's he talking about? He needs to be more socially conscious. But other people are like, look, he's evolved. He knows his lane and he right. stays in it. And since then, he's appeared in the Black Lives Matter video and he's thrown his support behind the movement. Mm -hmm. But my question is, you know what? We, we are the ones who make these celebrities famous. We buy their music. We go to their movies. We do all of that. Do they now have an obligation to be more to be an socially, activist? socially aware? Not to be an activist, oh, but to okay. be more socially conscious. What do you think? I don't think all of them need to because everyone has their point of view, right? And everyone mm -hmm. has their perspective on certain things. And you don't want everyone speaking for our community. I'm just saying. I mean, I get it. Just because you're black does not mean you have a black experience. And not, and it does not mean that you can connect with the struggle. The thing was with, with me, this dude was from the block. He's from Harlem, okay? He's from Soho now, honey. He forgot. Boy, bye. Listen, <laughs> like if you did not have the money that you had and you were just walking down the street, you're just another black man. Right. And at the end of the day, if the police stop you for whatever, heaven forbid, you know what I mean? You could be a Michael Brown. You could be a Philando Castile. So the idea that he kind of, his money insulates him, that's what bothered me. Not that he stays in his lane and says, you know what, I'm not a political activist. He's free to, to do that, to be that, to be an artist. So that's what he but said. you have to be... but. To act like somehow your money or where you live insulates you from being a black man? I crazy, crazy talk. I don't know. I, I didn't get that from what he said. I, I, I got that he just didn't think it was up to him to express an opinion about what's happening with other black yeah. people. Yeah. Not that he feels uh, insulated necessarily. Um, and, and I think that's probably a good thing in some instances. I mean, look at Charles Barkley. I mean, he comes out and says things yes. and you kind of say, Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> so, He's I like, mean, I'm a Republican. I'm going to... Yeah. Protect my money. So, like, so no, in this case, right. in this case, maybe it's a good thing that he said, "Hey, look, don't don't ask me about that kind of stuff. It's not no, it important to me." But but it, it does raise a, another issue, and it is just the level of <clears throat> consciousness that we uh, think uh, black folks should have, particularly mm -hmm. celebrities, because they do, in a sense, represent us right. in avenues in or venues right. that mainstream we don't get to. America. So right. you know, it's it's a tough thing. You know, if he's going to be a idiot about it, he should shut up. But if he can express an interesting point or perspective about the experience, then maybe he should say something. Yeah, yeah, well, I don't know. Luckily he's evolved, but. 
That's evolved. That. He's evolved. He has evolved. <laughs> he's so old now. He's yeah, evolved. He, he, he evolved to so old that no. <laughs> so, so, so just when we're getting over the shock of the five police officers that were killed in Dallas, right? Mm -hmm. um, three more were gunned down yeah. about 10 days later in Baton Rouge by another military veteran. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh my God, both shooters being military veterans, perhaps the U.S. could take some post-traumatic stress syndrome more seriously. What do you guys think about that? Well, Go ahead. actually, um, it was interesting. I was watching the news this evening, and they noted that, that mm -hmm. both of those guys were military um, veterans. And they did a study, and they found that a certain percentage of veterans leave the military with a certain amount of anger. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and remember that, in, in, in um, Fort Bragg when those they, right. they were killing their wives and right. stuff, right. and then they kind of like just brush it under the rug. Right. Yeah. So, so, so they're, they're wondering, you know, whether it's not a post dramatic stress disorder, stress disorder, but but maybe just a degree of anger mm -hmm. that allows them to express it in these very violent ways. But think right. about what you what you witness in at war. But see, they right? neither one of them saw combat. Right, neither exactly. one of those people were combat soldiers. Really? Yeah. Okay. Right. But but the yeah. military experience could still be really? stressful. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I hear. They say I they know. break you, right? And well, they, they try to break you. And build you up, right? Really, you up, break you down, build you up. Now, you done cracked up. Welcome back to What's the 4 and one where we're bringing you more of What's Poppin', Sydney. So you guys know that recently comedian D.L. Hughley appeared on the Fox News political commentator Megyn Kelly's show. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Uh, yes, what I... Hughley expressed that the video of the Philando Castile murder by a Minnesota cop clearly showed the cop had no right to fire his weapon. Mm -hmm. Kelly, on the other hand, suggested it was premature to conclude the officer didn't have a reason to shoot until the investigation was complete. Okay. Right. Now the video is clear to me and most other unbiased people, but my <laughs> issue is that okay. what are you to say? I'm unbiased. <laughs> the video is clear to me that most and most uh, unbiased people that um, it, it the cop really didn't have a reason to shoot, right. and and um, the issue is that studies show whites are 49 percent more likely to have arms and contraband discovered during a consent search by law enforcement than blacks. Yeah. So which group is more likely to be armed during a stop and consequently more dangerous? Mm -hmm. And why aren't cops as fearful and quick on the trigger when stopping white motorists? Because they know them, I think. Because, because we are depicted, well you, black men, Sandra Bland, black women, uh -huh. are depicted in a, in a aggressive uh, animalistic light via the media. Yeah. So what happens is oh, it's kind of like we're just like so shaken in our boots to like kill someone. I mean that's what's always being portrayed on television and some people right? right. Some people the only uh, interaction they ever have with a, a African American mm -hmm. is through television. Right. And right? Movies. So, movies. So I guess the question mm -hmm. uh, another question that would be if um, so like we we I'm assuming most of us would agree that the video kind of suggested that the police officer used uh, too much force. But that's the thing. Black people, when you have black people, there's always an assumption of guilt. We've seen that over and over again. Even with Tamir Rice. Remember when he was like waving around, you know, I had a little toy, toy gun. gun right. And the guy, the police officer came in and two seconds later shot him dead. And then they were like, well, he was bigger than an average 12 year old. And they told him that his gun was going to get him in trouble one day. And we did, you know what I'm saying? There was this assumption of guilt that he must have caused his own death. We say that over and over again. It's just but this, is this that, Would you say that's racist? Yes. All right. So <laughs> this is what's Absolutely. interesting is that yeah. most white folk, would say you can't assume that it's racist until we do our investigation and we see what really happened. I mean, and we know in that in, in the in the uh, Tamir Rice case, mm -hmm. there was no way that you could not know that that response had a tinge of racism in it. What Megan yeah. Kelly said was, um, "Look at Mike Brown. Look at Mike Brown. Like once we got all the evidence, look, not guilty. Like isn't that ridiculous? Yeah, yes, I, I couldn't. Even, I was looking at her like, oh my God, I can't believe this woman is saying this stuff. Cause I don't watch Fox News. Maybe I yeah. should, but because it was, I was, I felt targeted just watching that. I felt. Yes, see, I'm saying. I, I did. I mean, yes, you do need to investigate. Yes, obviously you don't want to just, you know." 
throw people in jail willingly. Okay, you have to investigate, but there still needs to be a presumption of innocence. innocence yeah. Why does it come in the other way? Like he must have been doing something wrong. He must have. Well, been. there was a presumption you know I mean? of innocence that the cop was innocent. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know it's kind of it, it's really yeah. unfortunate though because um it it is really making it difficult for folk to understand how to relate with cops. Because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter anymore. I mean, whether you're law-abiding um, or what, you know. It's I don't there needs to be increased, like, communication between cops yeah, and the community. community they have to community be, policing. Exactly. Community there policing. needs to be that communication you to, there. Yeah, yeah, you have to get that together. But, on the tail end of your story, support black businesses is pushing and gaining momentum. Remember, you like, yeah, we're going to boycott. <laughs> so what's happening... <laughs> After rapper Killer Mike, I know his name, Killer Mike, sat on MTV <laughs> Town Hall, meaning that the warfare is financial. Remember, you said something like that that maybe we should do. So, institutions like Citizens Trust, Black Owned Bank Network throughout the Atlanta and Georgia area uh -huh. opened about 8,000 new deposit accounts That's good. within That's a week. Great. I just hope this momentum keeps up. What do you guys think? Oh, I know what you think. But what do you think? You have, what no, do you idea. Think? Oh. Yeah, you have no idea what I think. Okay. Black Wall Street again? Yeah? No? I would like to think that the momentum would continue. However, Have you opened up I think, um, however, I think what we need to do is learn from our past. And um, if we're going to just open up accounts and tout, you know, let's support black businesses, would suggest that we're not learning from our past because in previous m efforts to support black business, we did the same thing. Um, we want to develop the black economy, and that right, goes okay. beyond just supporting black business. There's a lot more to it. Right. Lot, for example, right. for example start, let's look start, at let's start. Uh, right, but the start should be okay. Banks are not going to help you develop a black economy because banks can't really finance startup businesses. Right. So part of what they should Part of what they should do is put some of the money into venture capital funds or private equity funds because banks, because they take depositors' money, they can't lend to startup businesses because startup businesses have too much risk in them. But they do. They do they have do too lend. much risk. They lend. But That's not true. That's not that true. Is, uh, um, Santander, right, so, so, uh, Chase, Citibank, they all have They all have small business um, departments. Right. And, and, they, and they, they, they lend money to established businesses who've been around two for years. two, two, two years. or more years. Right. And when it's two years and on a low end, the, the owners are still signing personal guarantees. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. So we're saying what we need to do is develop Black businesses, we need to finance. So what black you can, so what you need to say, the, the so what you, you need to say, say through is, banks. I'm saying say. what we need to do is say, hey, support the black Not bank. Only through but banks, what we right, need to do is banks. also create the vehicles that we can use to finance startup businesses. Because if you look at why a lot of businesses fail, one of yeah. the reasons, one of the reasons is lack of capital. Yes, lack okay. of capital and. Yeah. Banks can't provide equity capital to small businesses, mm -hmm, all right? Mm -hmm. um, the other point I wanted to make was that what we need to do, you know, you heard of the Marshall Plan and mm -hmm. the MacArthur Plan. The Marshall Plan was used to redevelop Europe after World War II, okay. and the Mac MacArthur Plan was used mm -hmm. to develop Japan. Mm -hmm. All right, now, I'm not saying that our developing our economy is on the same scale, but it's pretty, it's, it's, it's I pretty agree. close, right? I now, would if agree you look 40 acres in the mule shit. If you look Still at those plans, <laughs> if you look at those plans, they, they were comprehensive. Mm -hmm. We need to do more than just say, open up a bank account here, open that. We need someone, leadership or whatever, to say, okay, you know, we need to look at our neighborhoods and identify how do we create an economy in our neighborhoods that would provide employment to the residents. Well, education. We, well, education. We that has to well, happen. That, that and early childhood education. education because well, what no, happens in our community is... Financial education is just like like it's, it's gone. Just there's nothing. Out there's, the there's window. And yeah. then and then what happens a lot of times is we are so on the we are so di a distracted yeah, community exactly. that That's what that is, what we do any any distraction that we can just kind of like hold on to that's what we do that's yeah. what we do but that's people I in think, general it's I think it has general. to start yeah. with education but it has to start with it has to begin with education on a different level. What you mean you financially and, and all that? I think that financially. Kind of Just one thing. Like if you're going to open up your account, do make sure you stay within the limits of FDI insurance. <laughs> $100,000. <laughs> it's $250,000 oh in some it? cases. Yes, when we come back, we will be interviewing our in-studio guest, Senator Roxanne Prasad. Keep it locked.
Our guest today is a longtime resident of Canarsie and she served the community for years. First, as president of the 69th Precinct Community Council, then on to assembly member, and now New York State Senator. Welcome, Senator Roxanne Prasad. Thank you. Thank you for having me here yes. today. Yes, thanks for coming. So, you know, as a freshman assembly member, you made history. First Guyanese person to hold an assembly seat. That's right. Uh huh. But you didn't rest on your laurels. I mean, you moved on pretty quickly. You went into the Senate seat. What was the decision? You know, that's, that's been my life. It's just about moving, doing things. Mm -hmm. um, getting to the assembly um, was a fantastic experience. Mm -hmm. But then when the, the Senate seat became vacant, you know, I was asked if, if I would run for that seat. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I decided, I thought about it carefully before. It was not a knee-jerk reaction. I thought about it and then I said, I will run for that seat because I c can continue to do the things that I was doing all along in the, in the community. And now I'm, I'll do it, and it will impact a larger group of people. Right. So it's all about people. Right. And how is being a state senator different from being an assembly member? It's more responsibility. Okay. You have now the, the Senate um, s district. It's about three times the size of the assembly district. Well, close to three times the size. About 318,000 people I represent. And... Um, so you're, uh, you can be going from Brownsville to, to Sheep's Head Bay, back and forth in any given day. And the needs are different because now, while I was in the assembly, I represented two housing developments, mm -hmm. uh, two NYCHA housing developments. Now in the Senate, I represent 17. Wow. So, you, so you see, and then you see the needs of the people. So th there are vast differences. Right. So, um, Senator, I, I know that... Um, you, you're facing a, a race against uh, Mercedes Narcisse, and you come from the Thomas Jefferson Democratic Club, mm -hmm. and there, there are certain people that say, oh, the senator is like a, a pawn of Frank Setio, mm -hmm. who's the Kings County Democratic Party mm -hmm. chair. How do you draw the line where you, you could be independent of Frank mm -hmm. and yet still be part of his team? I think it's, a, I, I find it funny when people say that, you know, She's a pawn, and she's just going to do only what they say. Um, I've done. I've been doing the things in in the, in the Canarsie for for many many years, right. and in the Senate and in the Assembly, I've done things independent of Frank Sedio, independent of the Thomas Jefferson Club. It's doing the things that's beneficial to the community. It's right. um, this you know what? It doesn't matter who your godfather is, and it, mm -hmm. it come. Everybody okay. thinks coming from the from the Thomas Jefferson Club. I have you know, it's the whole year and thou place right, and right. everything that you need and everything you want will be handed to you. It's not. You mm -hmm. still have to work. You still have to show the people whom you represent what you're capable of doing. Because if, you, if you're not producing, they'll have, they'll have no respect for you. Well, and so far, I, that's what I continue to well do. Well, I will say getting press releases, you're the first uh, elected uh, representative that, have, that has addressed the Pokemon craze. Yeah, <laughs> we, 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 really, we really needed to do that. You know what? A church called the office and says, could you help us? People were, kids were coming into the church looking <laughs> like they of a Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, okay. And they were like, we have to do something. And then I was standing in a corner and someone was just walking. And I heard her say, oh my God, it's, is it here? Is it here? And I'm like, what, what? is here? Right? right? And then they said, oh, Pokemon <laughs> is good. <laughs> Because it teaches people about landmark, it teaches you about community and all of that. But people, are, it's also scary. What are some of your other priorities that you want to get accomplished if you're, you know, elected for a second term? I've been working with NYCHA because there, there are certain issues that have been ongoing. And so I've had meetings with the tenant association presidents for all the developments that I represent and the NYCHA authority and just trying to rectify some of the issues. Um, for example, I just got, I worked with them in getting funding to improve their security. Okay. Everyone talks about uh, how dangerous it is in, 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 in the housing development. And so we, we wanted to, the people who are living there to feel safe in, the, in their environment. You know, East New York just had like this huge like rezoning that's happening mm -hmm. and people are kind of afraid that they're not going to be able to afford to stay in their neighborhood. Where do you stand on that issue? Last week we attended a town hall where the mayor and the city council member and the, sem and, uh, the, uh, the other senator, we were there. Mm -hmm. And people were 
it's they were afraid of the unknown, the questions that weren't answered, okay. and so they were talking. So the mayor and everyone else was um, reassuring everyone: we are not trying to price anyone out of the district. Mm. We are not by no means. Right. Um, we're trying to, and they talked about what's come going to come once you bring the new housing in. You have to make sure the people who are living here are their jobs that will be available to them. Right. You know, the Good developers point. must, point. must, must, must give jobs to the people in the district and you have to make sh things affordable there must be a certain percentage of the housing that must go to people living in the district and they can afford it if you go around the, the east new york area you walk around some places you would not believe it's the east new york that people talk about it's changing it's already changed. yeah if yeah. you see gateway to the mall the second phase of the mall i tell people i said we have a suburban mall here i said you have to come and see it People like, what are you talking about? I said, it's, it's not what you may think. What about the elephant in the room? It's East New York. There was an off-duty cop that had an incident and killed a man. And there is the Black Lives Matter. And it's, you know, how do you feel police community relations should be handled in communities like East New York, which is part of the district? Right. You know, for me, I worked with the police department for the past 20 years. Uh, you mm -hmm. may know that I was the president of the precinct of the precinct council in, in Canarsie. Yeah. And I've always pushed to foster a better relationship between the people mm -hmm. and the community. And so yeah, sometimes it, it's, it's difficult because people have preconceived ideas about what police. Is. What have you learned, like being involved with them? How do you, what did you have to get to know them. Mm -hmm. You have to be willing to step out of your comfort zone and say, okay, and you have to speak to them as, as, if, as a person. And I tell the officers when I speak with them, I said, when you're walking the streets and someone says hello to you, answer them, speak to them. That's how it starts. That's how you hmm. start to build a relationship. Too often you'll see, we'll pass each other. And you, you're afraid, to, the police is afraid, to, you know, you'll see them, they'll put their hand as they're passing groups of people. And people are like, oh, there's a police officer, we don't want to talk to <laughs> yeah, them. Yeah. I, uh, we have to get away from that. If somebody wants to go ahead and contribute to their campaign, where can they find you? What's your website? Well, if you go to my Twitter handle is Senator Prasad mm -hmm. and um, Facebook Senator Roxanne Prasad. The, the campaign headquarters is 77 Conklin Avenue, and that's Brooklyn, that's right here in the heart of Brooklyn. And they can find us there. And, you know, we're, look, we're always willing to, to have people come on board and, and assist us in any way possible because we work, I want to work with everyone. Mm -hmm. I have 320,000 constituents to work with. Mm -hmm. I cannot s be selective in whom I'm working with. Nice. So like that. that's right. just the way I'm. All right. Good right. luck with that. Good luck. Thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you so much you. for joining us. Thank you so very much. Yes. Keep it locked. Welcome back to What's the 411. Now we're about to jump up and wave and wave and <laughs> wave, 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 wave. Wave. You know how to not wave? Not wave, yet. wave, not, wave. Not yet. Caribbean cooker. Not yet. What you got in the black now? <laughs> yes. Yeah, not carnival yet. Two weeks. Uh, but yes. Have you ever wished that when you go to a Caribbean country, you could have all the information about that country like in the palm of your hand? No. I just want to drink. It would be nice. No, I, would, I nice. would like that. <laughs> it would be nice. Yes. Thank you, Sydney. Okay. Now you can. There's a new app, and it's called Promo Grenada. Oh, just for nice. Grenada. Yes. And it shows you exactly where to eat, shop, and party at the best places in the country and the weird thing is the guy who created it his name is Nigel Jones he is not a tech guy he's not in the tourist industry at all but he just saw that there was a need for an app that can do this and he created it so he also created information on Karakou and Petite Martinique because those are the two like sister islands and because he wanted to kind of you know promote tourism for those tinier islands as well but it's not just a travel app like there's also information on news it's a resource for Grenadians here and abroad. You, you can find radio stations, photo galleries, obituaries. You can promote your business. You can pretty much do everything. And Jones told Caribbean Life News, he said, look, since launching two months ago, there have been tons of downloads. And in three years, he would, quote, like to see Promo Grenada being able to support nonprofit organizations in fundraising ventures from the diaspora. So wait a minute. How much is this app? 
I don't know. It might okay. be free, probably. You think it's it might, free? It might be free. All that information? If, 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 well, all that information, but I'm sure if you want to post your business on it, you're going to pay some kind of fee for the advertising or whatever. So okay. he's probably making his money on the back end. And it's kind of interesting because I mentioned to a friend of mine who that, who's actually from Grenada and has a house there. I mentioned this too, and she said, oh, I need to need to learn about that because she yes. has a house right. that she wouldn't mind doing Winter. Airbnb. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so I'm like, yeah. wow, you know, so That's I have to make app. sure I uh, get yeah. the <laughs> No, oh, it's a it's a great app and it's available for iPhones and Androids and hope to see it. I hope to do it for every island. Well, I, I mean that's what he should do. I mean that's yeah. how he scales his business. I mean, I well, do you could do, do one. You could do one. I want to do one for Trinidad. Do one for Trinidad. You do right, Trini. Yes. You paying TTs? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. You think I know what TTs, right? No, I know TTs. TT dollars, yes. <laughs> All right, when we come back, we'll be bringing you events that are in the pipeline. Keep it where you got it. Welcome back to What's the 4 and one Now we're bringing you events that are in the pipeline. And the annual Martin Luther King concert series is now underway at Wingate Park. The third show in the series will be Reggae Night, y'all. Yes. And will feature dancehall artist Conscience and singer Atana on August 1st. The final Monday of the series will be Gospel Night and will feature Erica Campbell and a Christian Cultural Center Choir. For more information, go to brooklynconcerts.com. And speaking of the Caribbean, Bazori is a new Caribbean movie starring soca superstar Masha Multano, and it will make its U.S. debut on August 5th. Now, the movie is about being true to yourself and being honest in love no matter what. And of course, with Masha, there's music, there's carnival, so it looks like it'll be Who a are fun you? time. God, you always <laughs> okay. ABC Digital has acquired American Coco. The series will star its creator, De'Ara Kilpatrick, and will be produced by Viola Davis. Oh, yes, Mary nice. J. Blige will star in an upcoming film called Mudbound, based on a 2009 novel by Hilary Jordan. Okay. Mm -hmm. The film will be directed by D. Reeves. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice. And. Keisha Sharp mm -hmm. uh, will co-star in an upcoming movie about the late Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall. The movie will be directed by Reginald Hutland. Both are currently in production. And we bid farewell to Basketball Hall of Famer Nate Thurman has passed away from complications from leukemia. He was 74. And he once said that no human race is superior. No religious faith is inferior. All collective judgments are wrong. Only racists make them. Elie Wiesel was a Holocaust survivor and Nobel laureate. He died at age 87. May they both rest in peace. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to energy saving bulbs. Saving energy saves you money. Well, that will do it for this week's episode of What's the 4 and 1, your smart source for urban, lifestyle, and entertainment news. Until next week, check out our website, www.whatsthe411.com. And remember to hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, Periscope, and Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, What's the 411 TV. Please check us out, and we might just mention you on the show. Yes. I'm Kizzy Cox, and on behalf of Onika McLean and Sydney Wayman, thank you for watching What's the 4 and 1. We will see you next time.